So what I've got here for you is just a couple of questions relating to transformation matrices. What I want you to do is read the questions, pause the video, have a crack at them and then come back and check your working against what I'm going to show you here. So here you go. So there you go. We've got three questions for you. I want you to read each of the questions, all looking at each of the different types of transformation. So I've got one rotation, one reflection and one scaling. Have a crack at them and then come back and check your work in with what I'm going to show you. So pause it now to do that. So the first question is looking at finding the coordinates of a point under a rotation of 60 degrees about the origin. Now if we take K to be our transformation matrix associated with rotation of a point with respect to the origin, what we're able to then say is that that matrix K is equal to cos theta minus sine theta sine theta cos theta. Now we're able to just remember that matrix. We're able to just remember that that is how it changes under a rotation of 60 degrees or about under a rotation of sorry any angle about the origin. In this case because it's 60 degrees what I know is that theta is equal to 60. So what I can then do is look to get my transformed points so x dash y dash and I know that's going to be given by doing cos in this case 60 but minus sine 60 sine 60 times cos 60 from this element here when I do my matrix multiplication. And what I'm going to do is multiply that by a column vector representing the point 3, negative 4. So if I do my matrix multiplication to that, what I'll end up getting is a new coordinate given by 3 cos 60 take away negative 4, so plus 4 sine 60 and my second coordinate will be given by 3 sine 60, take away 4 cos 60. So that there will represent the coordinate that I'll get when I've done this transformation. All I then have to do now is physically do it. So all I then have to do now is physically do that calculation, multiply it through, and I get my solution to that one. So the solution to this, once you've plugged it all together in your calculator, when I round it to three decimal places, I get 1.964 and I get 4.598. So that would mean then my new coordinate, so let's call it P dash, when I've transformed it, would be at the coordinate 1.964, 4.5. 8. So that's me transferred it under that rotation. Second question focuses on a reflection. So it's a reflection on a line through the origin making an angle of 60 degrees with the positive x-axis. Now we've looked at how to do reflection with respect to simple lines y equals negative x for example before. I'm going to let you in on a little secret here for this one, where if I'm doing a reflection with any angle, regardless of what it is, through the origin, what I can tell you is that the reflection matrix, let's call this one R, is given by cos 2 theta, sine 2 theta, sine 2 theta, then minus cos 2 theta. So that there will tell you a reflection when you know the angle the line makes through the origin of any point. So remember that matrix there. It's just a cheeky wee bit of formula for you to take on board. So in order to do this one, I have to follow the same set of steps I did before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my R here, but what I'm going to do is redefine it as S, but in S I'm going to substitute theta. So in this case, I'm going to say S is equal to cos of 120, sine 120, sine of 120, minus cos of 120. And I'm going to let it P be the column vector of my point. 
So I'll call matrix of my point negative 2, 5. Then all I have to do is to get P dash, so my new point, under the transformation, which is X dash, Y dash. All I do is I multiply them together. So I do cos of 120, sine 120, sine 120, minus cos 120, and I multiply that by the P, which is negative 2, 5. What that then means I get is I get negative 2 cos of 120, extra line there, plus 5 times sine of 120. I've then got minus 2 sine 120, that's 2 sine 120, minus 5 cos of 120. Again, plug all of that into your calculator. Once you have, what you'll end up getting for that one is you'll get 5.330 and you'll get 0 0.768. So what that means then is my new point under the transformation P dashed is given by 5.330x and 0 0.768 in the Y. So there you go. That's that reflection there. Now the last one talks about a point 0.34 being scaled to give an image at that point. I want to find the scaling matrix for this. Now remember we mentioned that the scaling matrix, in this case let's call it S, is given by mu0, 0, 0, lambda. If we're going to look at just scaling an X and a Y to give us a new image at a point, this is the format of the matrix that we're going to use. And we're going to use that in this one because we're not going to associate any transformation of X and Y with each point. So what that means is for this one essentially I've taken mu0, 0, 0, lambda and I've multiplied it by my, by my column matrix 3, 4 of that coordinate and that's given me negative 1, 0. So I can use this to set up equations for mu and lambda to solve with relation to this. So if I was to do my matrix multiplication for here, what I'd end up getting is that 3 mu is equal to negative 1, 4 lambda is equal to 0, and from that I can say that mu is equal to negative 1 third, and lambda is equal to 0. So great, I've got mu and lambda, but it wants the scaling matrix, so what you have to do is make sure you write the matrix out. Don't just leave it as mu equals negative 1 third, lambda equals 0, it wants a matrix, so tell them what that matrix is. So in this case, S is equal to negative a third, 0, 0, 0. So that there is a scaling matrix that's taken this point and given an image at this point here. So I can use that for any point within that system to make the full transformation if I was to make a shape out of several points. That could be the scaling matrix I use. Working with these transformation matrices aren't that difficult. You just have to remember how to do them. So remember how to scale, multiply up and down the positives and negatives and how they affect it. <coughs> remember a reflection or rotation. So we've got them in relation to cos and sine for both of them. So memorize those, make sure you have them in your head. And then you can just use and apply when it gives you all the relevant information within a question.